Today I have flown all the way to Miami from Dubai. We're in a yacht right now. We have Jordan Welch and on my left, Luke Belmar. You have a relationship of trust with yourself. Most people don't trust themselves. Why? What do you think is the purpose of this life? Why have we been created? A lot of your viewers want to know about, because I'm a viewer of your show. That's How right. were you able to add value and get to the table with these people like Andrew, like Luke? What's a lesson both of you wish you learned sooner in life? You need to realize like when you think I am angry, it's not that you are angry, but you're experiencing anger. Your situation dictates your future. So if you perceive it, oh, poor me, I'm never going to get out. Oh, poor you, you'll never get out. Lacking the ability to have that self-realization. How can you get to that level? What do you think? I mean, you've done it with your show. You've done it in your career. I'm curious how you guys feel about that. I was talking to one of my friends. He's worth $6 million. Stressed stressed it was literally riots happening in my neighborhood people were coming down the street lighting stuff on fire the news that you watch are owned by people talk a bit about data sets i think a lot of people are still curious about what it is exactly when you're on your deathbed your wife ain't gonna be there your family's not gonna your dad he ain't gonna be there what is success to you brother what's the number one most crucial thing when it comes to self-improvement when you're 20 you're worried about what everyone's thinking about you when you're 30 you stop caring about what people think about you when you're 40 you realize people were not thinking about you in the first place Welcome back to the show and thank you for returning back to the podcast where we discuss business, happiness and self-improvement. Today I have flown all the way to Miami from Dubai, 17 hour journey to be sitting here right now. We're in a yacht right now. This was Luke's idea. Thank you for bringing me on. Welcome to Miami, brother. You, you took care of me in Dubai, so <laughs> Bro, I had from to pay the back plane, the favor. From the plane straight to the yacht and the view is beautiful. The sun is shining. It's a wonderful day. We got on my on my right side. We have Jordan Welch, a YouTuber with almost a million subscribers. I'm sure all of you guys already know him in the space. Thank you for coming, Jordan. Thanks for having me, man. Big fan of the show and happy to have you in the city. Appreciate it, bro. And on my left, as you guys know, second time, Luke Belmar. Thank you for coming, brother. Thank you for being in the city, brother. Welcome. All right. Very quickly to get into it. Ahmed, your advice. Wait, wait. No, I, no, I no, 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 no. <laughs> Let me get into it. All right. Get into it. What is success to you, brother? To me? Yeah. Peace of mind. And a billion dollars. <laughs> One billion, two billion, three billion. <laughs> exactly. What is success to you? The wealthiest man is the one that wakes up with the least pressure on his chest. That's good. What about you, Jordan? I feel like it's having something that you enjoy doing each mm. day. For me, it's creating, yeah. spending time with my people. Some people wake up with no will to live, no desire to do anything in their life. And I feel like that's the total opposite of success. So having something that you enjoy to do and, and strive to be get better at is, is what I see. Nice. That's very, very well put. Yeah, honestly, for me, because life is like, there's a quote, heavy is the head that wears the crown. And if you want a grand life, you have to have grand problems. So it's a tough balance. You're not trying to have all the nice things in life. If you have like nice cars, yachts, you're always under stress. Like what if your yacht's in a port that's unsafe today? Or the Lamborghini has this problem, or you know what I mean? So I don't know what you mean. <laughs> because <laughs> because understanding that philosophy of mine, I've positioned myself to not have those headaches. Yeah. So no, I don't know by experience, but I understand the But you know what right? I what I, I'm trying to course. say. Yeah, I, yeah. I'm I'm messing with you already, bro. <laughs> this man this man flew in, tired, but he's here grinding, jet lagged. Jet -lagged. You just came back from LA. How was that, bro? LA, bro, honestly, not the best experience. Like beautiful place. But it's, I think it's declined heavily. Absolutely. That's how it used to be. You Absolutely. used to live there, right? Yeah, I lived in LA for around three years. And I started to watch it go in this direction. I left around uh, March of 2020 when the pandemic started. And it was literally riots happening in my neighborhood. People were coming down the street, lighting stuff on fire, Damn. throwing stuff at buildings. It was a mess. Uh, it's my first time in US, so it's all very new to me. Miami's beautiful, though. Miami's the best. Yeah, Miami's sick. So. Hey, bro. I know very few people that for the first time land in Miami, get picked <laughs> up in an Escalade, get, cause bro, I, he was like, what are we doing? What are we doing? Tell me what we're doing. I was yeah. like, brother, Relax. I'm not telling you anything. <laughs> just pull up. Just have faith. And yeah. now we're here, bro. And, and he brought all the equipment as well. He's just like, bring your signboard. That's it. <laughs> yeah, just bring, just bring the name <laughs> of the show. <laughs> all right, guys. So look, both of you guys, your advice has impacted so many young and ambitious people's lives. 
And in today's video, we hope to perhaps reignite that fire in people to seek their maximum potential with some guidance and also perhaps go a little bit deeper into both your stories, who you are as people. And to start things off, I want to get really quick into it. There's a lot of ways out there to improve our lives, to reach our full potential. Is there one particular way or like would you, would you say there's one way if you had to rank it? At the top, what's the number one most crucial thing when it comes to self-improvement? What do you rank as the highest? I think it's self-belief. Okay. Knowing that you can achieve these things that you desire. For me, a lot of people are lacking that, and I lacked that for a long time in my life. And it was once I started to get in that mode that I started to make progress. Self-belief, straight and true. If you have any limiting beliefs in your head, it's never gonna work. Those are natural and they'll always come. It's just learning to push past those and prove to yourself that you are capable of achieving those things. And how, how do you push past them? You don't listen to the thoughts in your mind and you do the work anyways. And the small wins show you <laughs> what's possible, you know? Nice. What about you? What do you say is the number one? It's hard. It's hard to say because there's so many. Every day there's like a new kind of improvement hack. There's like cold plunges, you know, meditation, affirmation, love traction. Every day is like a new way. Similar to what you said. But when you look, what is to believe, right? So self-belief. Believing is this idea of having faith in something that you don't know is real. To me, the most important one is self-realization, where you don't have to believe it, you know it to be. Mm -hmm. So now this idea of leveling up and pursuing something, it's not because you believe and hope that something's gonna happen, but you've realized that if you do this, you will receive this. From input, you'll receive a certain output. So you no longer have to live a life of fear mm. because it's not a life of belief. It's a life of realization and certainty. So I agree with you. It's this idea, which I know that's what you were trying to convey, this idea of deep down knowing for sure and coming to that conclusion. So yeah, I'm Many with Many people are lacking the ability to have that self realization so how can you get to that level what do you think i mean you've done it with your show you've done it in your career i'm curious how you guys feel about that honestly for me it's always a challenge you know i think uh, there's a good quote from alex hermosi where he's like you don't build confidence by telling yourself that you are good or you are this or you are that you get confidence by having a stack of what does he say a stack of times where you've proven to yourself that you are that type of person mm -hmm. so i guess by the actions that you do daily you're forming your identity in your mind mm -hmm. of who you are as a person and then it's like a reciprocal feedback loop because the actions you do decides your identity, but your identity decides the actions you do. So if you work on doing the actions in the beginning, once the identity is formed, you don't longer have to rely on your willpower anymore. It's no longer a struggle. When the, when the, when the time hits 5 a.m. and your alarm goes off, you no longer have to push yourself out of bed. Your brain knows it's go time because that's who you think you are as a person. What about you? As a man thinketh, <laughs> so is he. Yeah. If you think it, bro, that's the reality of your life. So if you think you're a failure, if you think you're a loser, if you think you are designed to live in a cubicle, then that will be the reality of your life. But if you realize that you can be whatever you want to be and nothing's holding you back and nothing's stopping you except you, then once you get out of your own way, the game begins. Amazing, amazing. All right. So I just mentioned previously about affirmations. Have you guys tried that? And what's your thoughts on that? Because we've all seen the clips, you know, sometimes of people like, you know, they say, I am this, I am, I am wealthy, I am wise, you know, you repeat in the mirror. Have you guys tried this? What are your thoughts on that? Everybody has affirmations. Some are positive, some are negative. Ultimately, I feel like an affirmation is the thing that you're repeating in your head over and over and over again. Whether you so know it or not. You might, you are having it subconsciously if you don't know. Yeah. So you should be aware of what these affirmations are and try to be in control of them. But you're all, we all have them. True. The, the thoughts go on in our heads. Is that something you've, you've done, Luke? Affirmation. Comes from the word affirm, mm -hmm. which comes from the word to establish, a firm foundation. So affirmation is the foundation of your identity and you decide what you want to affirm it mm. to be. So upon this firmament, you're going to build your entire identity. So, like you said, it's both affirming, you can affirm anything you want. You are the molder of your own mind. So, I agree with you. The affirmations are not just a positive or a, or a mantra, it's 
how do you speak to who you are as a person? Mm. How do you perceive yourself to be? Right. And I think that that is where self-realization comes. It's perceiving that you are not your name. You're not your religion. You're not what other people say about you in the comment section. You're not what your parents believe that you are. You're not what your friends tell you that you are. You're not what you've told yourself that you're you are. You're not your thoughts. You are so much more. But everybody's like, who am I? Well, first name, last name, color. I'm from here. <laughs> I, I like these things. Those, those are things about you, but that is not you. Who are you? And people haven't even asked that. So once you identify who you are, which is limitless, then the game begins. Like I said it again. Yeah, right. That was pretty well put. And the thing is, you know, I'm asking these questions here because you guys both in your 20s have made, you know, tens of millions of dollars, super wealthy. And a lot of people watching this strive to reach that kind of wealth at such a young age. So and like you said right now, you know, uh, millions of people, they never like they never analyze themselves. You know, mentally, they're mechanical products of the factory of the... I actually wrote this down for this podcast because it's similar to what you're saying. Mentally, they are mechanical products of the factory of their environment, preoccupied with breakfast, lunch, and dinner, working and sleeping, going here and going there to be entertained. They don't know what or why they are seeking, nor why they never realize complete happiness and lasting satisfaction. By evading the self-analysis that you're talking about, people go on to be robots conditioned by their environment. True self-analysis is the greatest art of progress. It's very much like what you just said right now. Another one that people talk about all the time is meditation. Is that something you guys practice day to day? Absolutely, but not in the traditional sense of always sitting down and having 10 minutes with the little Calm app on my phone. I found the practice of meditation in doing things that calm me, such as walking, riding my bike, just sitting, reading, of course, the traditional method of meditation is powerful, but I found it in other ways as well. Okay. What about you? Nah. <laughs> nah. Zero is not your thing. It's not that it's not my thing. It's that once you live a life that's in tune, you, you don't have to enter a state of meditation to get downloads and to receive information. You just operate in a way whereby your receiver of information is clear from all static you can achieve a life like that. People have to go into the state of meditation because they live in Manhattan with the noise, the sound pollution, the crowds, the chaos, the, the energy, the 5G, all these different things, these, these yeah. stimulants. No wonder they have to literally unplug themselves fully. But when you constantly live in a state that's mindful of your environment, your energy, you don't have to enter a state of meditation. Mm. You live in it. You know, one thing I like about you, Luke, I feel like mentally, you're very composed, you know, whenever you talk, whenever even I see you off camera, on camera, you're always very calm, very balanced. I feel like you're someone who has really good control of, you know, the things that you're thinking about, good control of your feelings. Is that something that's like innate or is that something you have to work on yourself? Or maybe I don't know, like maybe you do have those thoughts and I don't know about it or like you are very, you know what I mean? What is it? When you say something, make sure it counts for something. Okay. If you're going to expend energy talking, make sure that it's valuable right if there's nothing to say just shut the f <laughs> so i just operate in a way where if i have something to say i say it and i measure it by three metrics is it kind is it necessary and is it true yeah if it's either if it doesn't match all three categories i'll most likely avoid it, it needs to be kind and kind doesn't mean nice like how people think kind is it necessary like is it the right time to say this is yeah. it the right context and is it true mm. And based off of that three metrics is kind of how I operate. So I think, is this kind, necessary, and true before I say something? If I think it filters through that, I voice it. So right. people need to have filtration systems and understand that the emotions that they feel mm. throughout like an op, like a, a download of information or throughout a conversation or a yeah. disagreement, that emotion isn't you. Yeah, You are yourself experiencing an emotion. Mm. But you can place yourself as a third party viewing the emotion and ask yourself, mm. why am I feeling this way? And is my response to the situation going to be kind? And is how I'm going to approach it necessary? And is what I'm going to say true? Because many times we deceive ourselves into believing that we have the right operation and mindset and that we're on the right side of the problem or the situation yeah. or the conversation. And many times we're not. So those are the metrics that I use on a mental basis. Nice. It's good that you have this kind of system in place. And like what you said, I think it's very true about like, you need to realize like when you think I am angry, it's not that you are angry, but you're experiencing anger. 
not that you're engulfed by the emotion. So that's a good mindset shift. What about you? What do you think? We tend to label these things that happen to us in life as good or bad when they are just happening. Oof, and learning to accept them for what they are and not trying to change the reality of the world will bring you more peace than anything else. Jordan, have I told you the story of the Chinese farmer? Oh, I know the story sick. of the Chinese farmer. This maybe the great. people don't say know it, the story. It, there was a Chinese farmer. Yes. And he had uh, his position in the village, normal guy, had a family, had his cattle, and he had a horse that he loved. One day, the horse runs away. All the neighbors come, sad, hey, I'm so sorry that your horse was lost. It's such a terrible thing. And he said, I don't know if it's a terrible thing. We'll see tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. The next day, the son arrives riding in the horse. Everybody's like, oh, this is so great. My son was able to find the horse. This was an incredible situation. He's like, I don't know if it's an incredible situation. We'll tell tomorrow. The next day, the son is riding the horse that was found. That was a blessing. And he falls and he breaks his back. Everybody comes, this oh, I'm terrible. so sorry. I can't believe you're, what, this is bad luck. I can't believe you got the horse. This yeah. shouldn't have happened. I don't know if it's bad luck. Mm -hmm. We'll find out tomorrow. Then, the next day, the army rolls in mm -hmm. saying, we are recruiting everybody that's able to work under the age of 25 Damn. to come and serve at the army because we're going to war against the Mongolians. My son can't go. He broke his back. Everybody came in. Oh, oh it's, a, bl it's a blessing. I don't know. We'll see tomorrow. And that's how life works. It's, it's not whether this thing is good or bad. It's how you interpret the situation and how you process the information and the worldview and perspective that you have towards something. I came from nothing. You came from nothing. How we perceived our situation versus... I came from not much. Very little. <laughs> yeah. But how you perceive your situation dictates your future. So if you perceive it, oh, poor me, I'm never going to get out. Oh, poor you, you'll never get out. But if you see I'm at the bottom, all I have is potential and growth and all I have is upside, then now you're excited. And all it is, it's a mindset shift. Mm -hmm. It's the realization that you can. And like you said, most people don't trust themselves because the small compounding wins in their life don't exist. Mm. They do a thing in a burst, in a sprint, yeah. and then they stop. True. If you can't trust your own word, how are you going to trust your decision making? How are you going to trust yourself as an individual? You yourself are a person. You have a relationship of trust with yourself. Most people don't trust themselves. Why? Because they don't keep their word. Mm, to themselves. Exactly. So you need to have true. compounding wins. Everything beautiful in life, everything comes from compound. Everything. Relationships. Mm -hmm business, Facts. finance, health, everything is compounding. That's, you don't want the, the burst and then to disappear into oblivion because you burnt out or things went south. You want to grow. Consistency compounds. And when you realize that, it's next level, bro. Life becomes more enjoyable because you're doing things. You become successful, bro. Yes. To we have real life proof. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You're not doing it just to achieve something big. You're doing it because you actually are trying to build something great and you're just doing it on a daily basis. So it's not about like, oh, I'm going to work for three weeks straight and then take a break. It's like, I'm going to do this every day and we'll see what comes out of it. Facts. And you might end up achieving more than you ever dreamed. Right. And I think as well, if you really, if you really think about your work sometimes as look, just looking at the output of it, it you might get discouraged because you yeah. feel like I've been doing this three weeks, I've not seen any results, you know, or I've been doing this one month, two months, three months. But I years think even years even sometimes and I think it's important to realize that the work you do although it may not be increasing the output it's increasing your ability to do that work so you're increasing your the trait that good trait that you have in yourself that you're able to follow your routine do that work you're still improving you yourself. know what I've come to realize most people don't know the seeds that they plant let me explain if I give you an apple seed yes and I tell you to plant it what do you know will come from it? An apple, an apple tree. tree. You know it because yeah. I gave you an apple seed. So the question is, what if you could control and understand the seeds that you plant, therefore know the outcome? Okay. The Bible says it. You shall know them by what? Their fruits. So what is the evidence, right, as to how you operate in the things that you want? You are able to calculate the outcome of your life based off of understanding the seeds that you're inputting. Let me give you a very basic example. Most people here that are watching, they don't know anything about their taxes. They haven't even stopped to think about it, right? They don't understand how taxes are filed, 
what taxes you owe. They rely on what? An accountant. They rely on a third party to tell them the truth, right? So once you understand that you have to be self-actualized and autonomous, you begin to take life seriously. And I've come to realize that people haven't unlocked that. They're extremely dependent on others. And once shit hits the fan, there there's is. nobody to count on except you and your own skill sets. So it's a wake-up call. That's crazy and very true, honestly. What do you think is the purpose of this life? Why have we been created? It's a question that I'm still trying to answer. But for me, I find at this stage of my life, my purpose is to try to become the greatest version of myself so that I can inspire the people around me. To become the greatest version of themselves. And the people that I come in contact with. And just to be here is the purpose itself. Maybe there is no deeper goal because let's say you make a billion dollars, let's say you become super famous, you can't take it with you. True. So why not just be here and enjoy the ride and try to reach your fullest potential on this planet and maybe you can impact the next generation on their journey as well. Thanks. But what else is there? Is it to be famous, make money? I don't think so. This is the journey. Like you said, be here in the journey because the destination we know it doesn't bring all the happiness. It's about the journey. Yeah, exactly. What do you think? Dude? It's about the present moment. Yeah. It's all we have. There is no journey. <laughs> because the past, or how we imagine it to be, or how we conjure it to be, is just imaginary. It's a Memory. perception of reality of the past that is skewed by emotions. It's skewed by true, true perceptions. Facts. It's not reality. Mm -hmm. The future, most people live in what? A dystopian future. Shit's going to go wrong everything's i'm gonna go broke so they live in anxiety the ones that live in the past live depressed because they're thinking about all the shit that they missed the ones in the future are anxious because they can't control it yeah. yeah the ones that are right here right now understand that there's no timeline there's like this right now i could be doing anything in the world right now but i chose to be here right now because this is the what i've chosen to be the most important thing so what I've come to realize is the most important thing for me is to develop myself. The more I develop, mm. the more I understand, the more data sets I acquire, the better understanding I'm going to have as to how the world works. I'm in no place to give opinions as to this. Bro, I'm here to explore, here to be a student, mm. and here to be taught. Nice. That's it. I'm not here to give opinions. I'm not an expert of nothing, brother. <laughs> and based off of that, you live a free life because you know you're not accountable to anybody except God. So you operate really, really smoothly. That was very well put, man. And I, this, is what, this is the calmness that I'm talking about. Like these thoughts, is this something that was innate in you? Or is this something you had to work on to reach this level of peace? I don't know. Self-development. Just uh, pick up some books. Most people, most people have the, the, the language skill of a, of a six-year-old. <laughs> we'll talk about books, but I have one question before that, actually. You talked about data sets. You talked about recently a lot. And I think a lot of people are still curious about what it is exactly. So a data set is a download of information, right? So if you live in a system, the world, what is the universal language? The universal language is numbers, right? Math is the language of God. Everything is based off of numbers. And if you understand that, you're gonna be in a situation where you don't perceive things for what they're seen as, you perceive them for what they are at its most basic common denominator. So I think data sets are just downloads of information and you can position yourself in different places to acquire different information. So if you're a video game character and you have experience points, you get to spend them wherever you want, mm. right? And you have skill sets and attributes that you have to develop. Some people develop their strength, stamina, whatever, whatever. You get to choose where you're gonna allocate those points. So people need to find the skill sets that they wanna develop and then go find the data sets that'll give them those skills. We went and spent a week in Switzerland. Completely different environment, dude. Completely different vibe, completely different uh, even physical environment gives you different information, mm -hmm. gives mm -hmm. you different understanding, the culture, how people move. Did you experience that? Great video, by the way. You guys Thank did a fantastic. You. If you guys have not watched that video, go check out that video. It's sick. That video should be paid. That video should not be free. It's so, so much value, so, much, so many gems in such a short amount of time. It's really a good video. Thank you. Yeah, I think the video captured that week pretty well. We were enjoying a new place together with a group of other young, successful men and women. We met people from all different cultures and we had different types of food and it was really just a total reset for me I mean coming from a city like I come from Fort Myers Florida 
I didn't even know Switzerland was a place growing up, bro. <laughs> so <laughs> to be over there, spending a week out there, it was a good time. And many data sets were downloaded on that trip. It comes back to like what you said about the environment and stuff. You were telling me on the way here that when you put yourself in these environments, you completely opens your mind to what's out there. Definitely. You have to. Like, why would you limit yourself to not experiencing something? People live in fear like they have something to lose. Mm. Brother, we all end up dead. Like, chill the <laughs> out, bro. Yeah. Don't take life so seriously. People out here looking at their bank account. I was talking to one of my friends. He's worth $6 million. Stressed. Stressed. That he's going to lose it. That, no, that he's going to lose it. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, then if you're going to lose it, okay, go spend it. If you're freaking out, just go spend it. Lose and it right away. And if you're constantly living in this fear of, I'm going to lose it, I'm going to lose it, I'm going to lose it. You might lose it. Exactly. <laughs> so there's this illusion of how people operate and how people think and how people's mindsets are with regards to everything in life, dude. I don't know. I just think people need to focus on, on acquiring data sets because it's such a worthy ideal in life. Isn't it's it such true? a fun thing to do. Isn't it true that if they're consciously doing it or not, people are always acquiring data sets. Mm. For sure. Whether you're watching these Instagram gossip videos or you're True. on TikTok or you're watching the new prank you're video, you're downloading shit to your brain subconsciously. Your mind, is, your mind will be programmed. The question is who's gonna program it? Mm -hmm. Are you gonna program it yourself or are you gonna be swayed by the influence of other people? Dude, Facts. the news that you watch are owned by people that own companies and push narratives to push their companies. Do you not understand? It's so obvious. So when you understand that there's people behind the message and that the message has what? An intention and narrative. Agenda. Once you discover that, then you realize the bullshit. So if you do not program yourself, then somebody will program you. Damn. Yeah, true. And like you said in my last podcast with you, it's literally called the news program. Yeah, <laughs> it's your regular your daily, pro regular to your your daily programming. programming. <laughs> yeah. People true. sit there. Gather around, family. Go get the microwave food. Popcorn. Nuke it for two minutes. All right, TV bring the dinner. GMO. Let's sit with the plastic utensils. Oh, well, I got cancer now. Oh, nice. Look what ads are showing up on TV. All the All pills. Spot brought to you by Pfizer. Brought to you. Bro, it's a scam from top Side to effects bottom. may include death. <laughs> Literally sometimes. <laughs> Crazy. Damn. You mentioned books. Let's talk a bit about books then. That's books are data sets, bro. Big self-improvement. Yes. There's a reason why every dark age began with censorship and the destruction of knowledge. Because only the educated are free. Mm. We live in a society of uneducated individuals, unskilled individuals. Books are important because they give you information. They're not necessary in and of itself but they're good tools to utilize. And if they're at your disposal, you need to figure out which author writes what book for what reason. There's dudes that write books with nice titles to be bestsellers. To be famous. With no substance whatsoever. Just to be but author. when you mm -hmm. understand the essence of the author and you understand the person behind it, now you start picking up books with what? Intention. Like this book right here. What was the intention behind Meditations by Marcus Aurelius? He yeah. didn't want to become New York Times bestseller. He didn't want to sell books. It was his private journal. He was writing his thoughts. He was sharing his life. And it comes off as some of the greatest wisdom that we can study today. We were just talking about 100%. Mm -hmm. It's a book that you've read. You've yeah, studied. it's a book not only that I read, but I returned to. Nice. And I think the most powerful books are meant to be returned to. Right. It's not, everybody's like, I read 52 books a year. <laughs> But you don't remember any of the shit you read from the book, and you couldn't even tell me the list of books you read. Yeah. It's better to find some core books that are foundational and continue to revisit those. You guys should definitely check out this book by Marcus Aurelius, the most powerful man in the world at his time, emperor of Rome for two decades. Mm -hmm. Anyways, what you said I think is very true, and I think more they really say reading is having a conversation with the greatest minds of the previous mm -hmm. centuries. And I think, like you said, if you go on life without, being, without educating yourself, you're never going to know what's up. You don't know what you don't know. You so the know. goal is to know so that you can know. The more that you know, the better off you'll be. And now yeah. you know. There you go. <laughs> 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 Subscribe. <laughs> like, <laughs> but, uh, you know, for me, we we're talking about some of the best ways to become successful in life. And for me, like what you said earlier, the number one thing for me in my life that had the most impact was the people that I was around. Mm -hmm. Like up, when I was a kid, I didn't read books, to be honest. I didn't read any books. 
I never um, did cold showers or meditated or read journal. But the moment that I changed the people who I was friends with was the moment everything changed for me. There's a few people I knew that were making good money and I was fascinated by it. So I just try to put myself in that situation to be with them. And obviously they were busy. I had to add value to those guys to hang out with them. I had to bring something to the table. It's all about value. You get, we know this. And you're big on that. You're huge on that. You have a whole club about that. So I think for me, that was and honestly like out of everything, I could have gone down a million bad paths. Like I'm sure all of us, we've had, we've all had friends like growing up, I don't know, I was a pretty troubled kid. And a lot of my friends, they went down wild paths. And if I was with them, I'd be in those same shoes. I want to ask you something that I know a lot of your viewers want to know about because I'm a viewer of your show. Yeah. Absolutely. How were you able to add value and get to the table with these people like Andrew, like Luke? How did you get to that position? And what do you mean when you say add value? Because a lot of people want to be sitting on this yacht right now. A lot of people want to be sitting mm. at that table. Mm. Very good question. And I th like, you know, I said a lot of people want to sit on this table. There's a quote that's like, if you're not if you're not on the table, you're on the menu. <laughs> it's just a funny quote. But yeah, honestly, for me, value comes from understanding what someone wants and then providing that to them because they will never tell you. Like if I went to Luke today and said, Luke, bro, how can I help you? Now, I'm, now he has to think about the task to give me and now he has to monitor. It's never going to work like that. So when Luke was coming, I told him, I said, Luke, I, I never knew the guy, but I was like, Luke, you're coming to my city. I you know I was born my whole life. I was born there my whole life. I spent it there. I was like, I'm going to take you around any experience, whatever you want to do. We saw lions and tigers in the Sheikh's palace and, you know, we went to the desert and I think it's all about, and with Andrew, you know, uh, it was a lot of similar stuff like that. We got him a car for like a month. So find out what someone needs. There's always something you can provide to someone. And uh, these things that I provided weren't even my own things. I didn't take him to my <laughs> buggy place or my lion's den, someone else's. And I added value to that guy somewhere else. So it's all about favors, you know, mm -hmm. like, if you're able to find out what can make some because everyone lacks something and if you can help them get that thing even if you're not providing it they, there's a law of reciprocity mm -hmm. that's in everyone i think it's also in the 48 laws of power when you can provide someone something they will help you back like he came on my show and it was an amazing episode so i appreciate that and now in miami session, and he's returned the favor he's taking me on the yacht you know what i mean so when you add value to someone they will help you oh, a lot of times it didn't happen. I, I helped a lot of people and they didn't give a shit. They took mm -hmm. it for granted. That will happen, but it's okay. It's it's life. The you thing is, few the, people who do return it. It's because the best favors are the ones that are not remembered. You're supposed to give without expecting anything in return because you're not giving to a person. You're giving to yourself. When you are in a place where you can empty yourself consistently because you're so full, that becomes beautiful. That which is stagnant becomes swampy mm. you have to be able to fill yourself with energy fill yourself with truth and be able to share that and be able to convey that because if you just hoard it and keep it to yourself then you're going to become so self-centered that everything around you revolves around the persona mm. rounds around me it's, and a that's not how it should be. it's a terrible existence is a Grinch existence. Right, but, and I'm asking out of curiosity here, not to say that I know which way it is, but for me, I feel like everything is, in life is just transactional, you know? And you talk about like giving without, I generally really want to know your thoughts because for me, I feel like it's all about exchange of value, you know? Transactional, adding value, receiving it. Life but the is. transaction doesn't have to be equal. And that's the thing, it's like, why do you do things? If you do things, you want something from people, then you're not actually doing something for them. You're doing something for yourself. For yourself. Yeah, yeah, so everything is like that in life. But no, it's not. No, I don't think so. You don't but think so? It, but it's yeah. not like that because that's not how I think. Yeah. I think, how can Ahmed come to Miami, have a great time, and meet great people? That's it. There is no premise. There is no thought. There is no nothing. No agenda. And, and it's not even, bro, if you would have sent me a text message, I'm coming from Dubai, I would have brought you on the yacht. Either way, brother. We have some of my members from capital club i sent a message on my telegram yo three of you just hop on the yacht with me tomorrow just found them they haven't paid me for anything it's just come hang out let's have a good time because once you're blessed you want to bless people bro you just want to give from a place of gratitude that's where joy comes from and yeah there may be a selfish factor attached to the feeling and all that stuff but i think you can be in a situation where you can give without expecting anything in return
For sure. And there's a difference. And yeah. I think people can tell the difference. Yeah. You know, I have people that will offer me different things or invite me to different places. And I can tell when it's genuine, yeah. when they really want to spend time with me. And when it's, yo, let's just do a video or let's just yeah. let's just make some content or whatever it is. It's a big difference. Yeah. And I think people at a high level can tell that difference and they'll put you in different categories depending on the way you give and, and the type of person that you give. So that's my perspective on it. I'm a big giver. I give gifts to all my friends. I'm, I'm taking care of everybody when we go to dinner. It's like, I, good gifts too, bro. <laughs> I saw the, the board. It was very nice. Yeah. Yeah. Continue. And I did that because Luke's a good dude. And it wasn't because, oh, this is going to make him my friend. And no, nah, I just... I just wanted to do it. Right. Yeah. Uh, you guys are probably right. I don't know. For me, I've always just felt like everything in life you, was... I hear you, though, on the you know transactional. I, mean? like, I hear you. I've only, I've only experienced it in that sense. I've never experienced it the other way. And I think that, you know, there's like they say everyone, uh, men are only loved on the condition that they provide something. And then and he's like, dogs and women are loved unconditionally. And I was like, wait, even dogs are not loved unconditionally. We only like the dog because it makes us feel... It gives us <laughs> it gives us uh, affection when we need it. When we feel lonely, we have someone there to be with us. But so that's, that's but that's o- But that's them. only if you got the dog for yourself. If you went and got a dog that you found in the street that was disabled and you actually said, my life's purpose is to make sure this dog lives a good life regardless of how inconvenient it is to me. There are people that do that. But it made you feel like a good person. Maybe not. Maybe no, some, yes, you, but you, ma- you but you maybe the, the intent Yes, but maybe the intention isn't cuz brother, it's self-righteousness. You're not out here professing it to the world. I'm saying there's things that are done in secret. Good that's done in secret. 100%, people that which donate, is the ultimate good. When 100%. You, yes. No, no, like this I 100% agree yes. that it happens, but I think that I'm not only talking there's about brother, an exchange of value, there's but some things in life they make you feel good. Even let if me you're doing it let me tell you, brother. There's a there's a there's a but this is a parable in the Bible, yeah, where Jesus says there's two different people that enter the synagogue to tithe, which is to do- donate yeah. and to give a percentage of their earnings. Yeah, here comes this big businessman dropping bags, it's loud. He <laughs> wants everybody to see him. He got his reward. He got the praise of man. This old lady comes, widow, walking, drops two little pennies. Jesus says, who do you think gave more? The one that it hurt them to give? To be so giving that you give everything that you have? Or the one that who gives did, leftover? And didn't feel it. Doesn't feel it. Get it. You need to give to the point where it becomes unco- where it hurts. That is where selflessness comes in where it, tr- it transcends the feeling of good. And there's people that are selfless, brother. Look at these people that are out here. Uh, Mother, not, not Mother Teresa. <laughs> people of these of this nature, women like that, their their entire life is based off of what? Sacrificing for other people. That's a, that's a huge ordeal. I think that that exists. And I think it can exist in the business space as well. Mm-hmm. If not, well, we'll bring it. Yeah. <laughs> we'll make it happen. Yeah, I mean, I, I do see where you're coming from, 100%, no doubt. I, cha- I changed your mind, brother. You're good. New data set. <laughs> Honestly, New data not set. Not really, but uh, maybe I will get there. Uh, maybe I'll get there. Right now, I don't know. Just my experiences. You know what I mean? But like, what's a lesson both of you wish you learned sooner in life? Great things take time. Because I started my journey of trying to become an entrepreneur very young, mm. around 13, 14. Nice, me too. Throughout high school, I had a lot of sadness and anxiety because I wasn't successful and all these things that I was trying were not working. And I used to beat myself up so much. In fact, I found one of my old journals from high school and I was writing in there and I was like hearing that voice of that kid and he was talking about how sad he was and how he felt like a failure and how life wasn't going his way. And if I could sit with him right now and just tell him where he was headed, I think not only would I have been successful faster, but I would have had more enjoyment on the process. But perhaps it was necessary for me to go through that to come to this realization. Mm. But that is something I wish I learned earlier. Me too. If there is one thing that I wish I learned earlier is that there's nothing to achieve beyond yourself, beyond the actualization of yourself. No, No business that you build, no accolade that you receive, no title that you gain, no amount of money that you earn trumps or beats the self-actualization process of an individual where you understand that your purpose is to become the best version of yourself and that your identity doesn't lie in your achievements and what you do and what you have, 
but that you know that you are enough in and of yourself and that you can live a life of peace. I wish I would have learned that before because you start doing all these things. You start making all this money. You start doing all these businesses because you want your identity to be worth something because you yourself don't find any worth because you've been told what is worthwhile. The dude from Louis Vuitton is selling you the fucking pipe dream mother. What is he selling you? That the, that the Louis Vuitton bag is going to make you dope. He's, he conned everybody. There's a verse in the Bible that says, True. at the end of times, the merchants will deceive the entire world. Dude, bro, design, that's all a scam. It's a gimmick. It's a facade. And now he's the richest man in the world just recently. There you go. Yeah. So you start it's realizing that it's a it capitalization always. on the identity of individuals because people cannot have a self-identity because they don't know who you are. I wish I would have learned that I am enough so that while I'm doing these things, I'm not doing them to find who I am, mm. but I'm doing them because I am. Nice. And you know what's interesting about this guy, Brandon Arnold? You won't even see him ever wearing like a loud logo or anything. <laughs> so he just basically conned you guys to wear all these, you guys look like LV billboards. <laughs> and he doesn't even, you never see him wearing a single LV t-shirt or one of these jackets, you know, with the like reflective. He, he knows what it is. It's, it's, it's a bunch of walking billboards at the end of the day. And yes, they are selling the dream. They do it with the cars too. Yeah. The cars are fun, but you think when you get that, you're going to change at all? True. <laughs> <laughs> you're still that same person. Yeah, facts, honestly. Cars, especially cars, are cars are an interesting one because like you feel like they're fun. You know, it's easy to they like yourself. Fun. They are you fun. can like yourself and tell, you, tell yourself it's not materialism. It's just that I really enjoy going fast. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's a tricky one. But cars are great. It's the issue isn't the car. The issue is the issue isn't the Louis Vuitton. The issue isn't any of these things. The issue is when your identity is placed mm. in them. And when that is stripped from you, you are nothing. That's your if I was to take away your car, if I was to take away your designer, your who would, what would be left? Or are you a carcass of the dreams of other men? That's so good. many people are that. A carcass of the dreams of other men. Buying things and trying to become something that maybe they never wanted to be in the first place. And then when they get there, they're like, oh. It was a scam. Yeah. And now I'm broke. And now it's too late. Yeah. But at can't. least I'm popping on Instagram, right? <laughs> at yeah. least, at least people think I'm the drip. The drip <laughs> I'm dripping. <laughs> and when you realize, they aren't even thinking about you. They're not. They're thinking about themselves. They're drip. That is one of the most humbling realizations of them all. <laughs> Nobody really cares that much. Honestly. Even if you did the greatest thing in the world and you were Kobe people Bryant have so or much LeBron of their James. own problems, right. their own difficulties, so much noise in their own head, brother. Nobody. If cares. you die today, your mother me and maybe another 50 75 people show up by 2 p.m half of us are hungry we're booking restaurants mm. by 5 p.m your mom can't shed in any more tears she goes home she goes to bed and in the morning she figures out how do i pay the bill mm. and everybody's back to work mm. long gone dream baby in a day there's the post on the gram and on twitter da, 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 r.i.p recipes recipes gone and the next of, thing yeah on dude. to the next so that's how people operate. They're operating off of the paradigms, the realities of other people and their perceptions of them. Brother, everybody's perception of me is biased, flawed, whether good or bad. How do I perceive myself? It's the and only you know, thing that matters. It's the only thing that matters because it's the only thing that's real. Mm, when you're right. on your deathbed, your wife ain't gonna be there. Your family's not gonna, your dad that tells you, that runs your life now, is, he ain't gonna be there. You'll most likely be dead already. It'll be you and yourself. And the question is, you're going to have to ask yourself is, did you live this life the right way or did you f*** up? Did you live it for others? And that is where I define success. That is the ultimate hell or heaven. That final moment where you're looking at your life like, I did what I said I was going to do. Or I never became that man that I wanted to be. Damn. That's freaking so I So I think success will be defined at the end of your life. So I'll let you know when I get there. 120 years. That's how long I'm living. So got like 90 something to go. Chilling for now. We on yeah, the young. Yeah, Life is chilling. good. No, no wrinkles good. yet. We good. But anyways, yeah, that, good. that got really deep for a second. But yeah. Good, good session, bro. Yeah. From like, they say like when you're 20, you're worried about what everyone's thinking about you. 
When you're 30, you stop caring about what people think about you. When you're 40, you realize people were not thinking about you in the first place. Try to get to that point at 40 sooner. <laughs> yeah, no. or, sooner the better. Or yeah. just realize it right now. Yeah, exactly. Listening to this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just switch it on. Reprogram. Reprogram. Rewire. How do you rewire your brain? Because I know it's something that people think about all the time. How exactly? Because some of my, my beliefs are formed. Let's say someone's watching this video. His beliefs have been formed already. It's too late. He's been formed by the news, formed by society, by the schools. The, the doctrinations happen. Now, how does he escape? How does he reprogram his brain? It's not too late to rewire your brain. Definitely. You just have to be aware of what you're thinking every day. And you have to be aware of what's been programmed into your mind. Awareness is the first step for you to be able to make a change. From there, you can see what you can remove and then begin the process of educating yourself and getting new data sets and new inputs so that you can, as you said, rewire your brain. But you have to first know what's there. I'm going to curveball you. Yes, of course. Psilocybin from psychedelic mushrooms. So what psilocybin does, as well as lion's mane, they both work collectively and they work extremely well, is they create what is called neurogenesis, which is the regeneration of neurons and neural pathways and neural networks in your brain. Everything is energy, right? Mm. So the information in your brain is transmitted through what? Electrical signals. Okay. So you can biohack your brain into doing what? Processing information differently. So you intake lion's mane and what are you doing? Creating new neural pathways and new neural networks to find optimize, your brain will find optimized ways to pass information. So now what you're doing is you're saying, how do I rewire my mind? Biohack it, new. supplement it, increase your ability to what have better neural network better neural transmissions new. have new neurons come in and then what i like to do is also stretch my spine i know this was a completely <laughs> curveball but you have to understand the physical yeah. implications of changing your mind because you drink tap water you have brain fog mm. your pineal Bio glands chemistry. calcified you eat junk food your life is so you want to your change gut. your mind you have to change what your, your gut, gut. We so talked this about this, thing. right? Because your gut Very operates lesson. like an individual. It thinks in and of itself. Start looking at the microbiome. It's crazy. But anyways, back to psilocybin and lion's mane and neural network this, pathways. Yeah. So your spine operates as what? The, the pathway of what? Electricity. Electricity. Yeah. It's the road. It's the highway of your body. Everybody's stiff. Everybody has scoliosis. Everybody's sitting down. So all these things, you start realizing, whoa, there's huge implications as to why I feel lethargic, why I have brain fog, why I have ADHD. Mm. But no, let me just, instead of thinking for 30 minutes, what my problem is and why I'm so unhealthy and why my brain's not operating, let me go take some medication from the doctor. Or a nap. <laughs> Everything <laughs> that pharma has created, nature has a natural solution for. All of it. We are self-sufficient in and of ourselves. But once again, people are lazy. So they, want what? That they depend, pill. they depend on somebody else yeah. for their problems and the solution of those problems. Mm. So once you understand that if you want to rewire your mind, you also have to rewire your body, your biochemistry, then you start operating in a different way. You can't start dumping motor oil into a machine True. that isn't designed to have that motor oil. You're going to be, mm. that's how it works. So take care of your biology, take care of your body, take care of your mind. And I think that that's a great step to rewiring your operating system from yeah. the physical side, because mm -hmm. we didn't address right. that, but it's extremely important. Yeah. Super important. Yeah, yours is like more of like a belief, but it's interesting what you said, because I've tried and, you know, I've tried the um, lion's mane, the pills, you know, mm. and definitely I feel like, honestly, I didn't feel it too much, but I felt a slight improvement of clarity, you know, the brain fog feeling, you know, and, and like what you said last podcast episode, when you say I have a gut feeling, what does that mean? People, you know, people didn't <laughs> dissect it. And you dissected it in the last video, which we did, which was your gut's like a second brain. And it determines how you feel, your mood, you know, what type of, uh, what's it called? It regulates your emotional stability yeah. through serotonin. So people are like, people yeah. are like, I'm not happy. They think it's a mental problem. Maybe it's somewhere else. Mm. But people have been lied to into believing that they're sick in the mind. I have a chemical imbalance. Let me take this pill from yeah. the therapist as opposed to... How do I get chemically balanced? Let me not eat McDonald's. <laughs> they think McDonald's will make them happy. But it's insane. Them the sad. Happy Meal, bro. The Happy Meal. Wow. <laughs> wow. 
the Happy Meal. I'm not going to lie. I used to tear up some Happy Meals. Bro, that, was, that, was, that was a big, big deal. Max, you know, bro, big a Max. It's a great name, though, for such a shit product. Terrible yeah. product. All right. This has been an amazing episode. Thank you guys so much for being here, both of you guys. It's been an honor. Um, I hope you guys learned something from this video. This is some wisdom directly from two people who have accomplished so much at such a young age. You should definitely check them out online. And yeah, thank you guys for watching. Leave a comment if you enjoyed this. I'll see you guys in the next one. Make sure to subscribe to this man as well. He's on he, he's on a path to greatness. And not <laughs> just watching it live. And the few people that are left at the end of the video now, not just a comment. What are you learning? Give me a data set. Don't just uh, extract value. Give some value back to us. I'll be reading the comments. See if you guys drop some sauce. Same here. Peace. All right. Best regards.